How you guys doing today? Back at you with another video of Creepy Crawler RC. So today's video is about how to build a trailer. Uh, one tenth scale, big enough to hold the Red Cat Gen 8. No problem. Big enough to hold a Traxxas NPRC car. No problem. Um, definitely a big trailer. One tenth scaled. So let's just jump right into it. Everything's aluminum on this. Besides the all thread or ready rod, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, so the price of this trailer is about 50 bucks without the price of tires because these are the Red Cat tires, the Gen 8 tires that I replaced. So you guys can cut a couple prices out if you guys already have this stuff, make it cheaper than 50 bucks. That's if you guys don't have tires. So. You get tires pretty cheap. But okay, so the all thread or ready rod, if you guys never seen that, it has threads all the way down the shit, whole length of it. You can get that for about three or five bucks, depending on the size and the length. Uh, I cannot remember the size of this. It's pretty small, it's a uh, green ended. So the, it's actually green. So if you guys go to like your tractor supply and see the ones with the green, it's pretty small. I cannot remember the sizing but that's the size I used. I bought two of them because I couldn't find one wide or long enough to actually accommodate the width of my trailer. And then a coupling nut, which would be this one here. If you guys cannot find a long enough one either like I did it or couldn't, it's about $1.50 for that coupling nut. And that combines them both. And I would highly suggest putting super glue or a Loctite in on the threads of this because if you don't it's just going to loosen itself up every single time it's not a self locking nut or anything like that um regular nut hex nuts or stainless steel I prefer to go stainless steel just because it won't rust to actually hold the tires on and if you can see I used two of them one back there then two and blue loctited them together and jam nutted them so you go opposite ways to tighten them up against each other and that, what that does is locks the threads together, thread lock it without thread lock. But I use thread lock too on top of it. Just because I don't want this trailer to fall, fall apart out while I'm on the trail or anything like that. Um, for the actual framing of it, I used, and fender, I used this stuff here. It's a half inch by half inch angle aluminum. I got this. 72 inch piece that was half inch by half inch like I said Angle for nine bucks. I used two of them didn't even use it all But I used one full one plus a little more off the second one But I bought the full length one because I wanted more to go um, You're gonna need aluminum sheet if you want to do this aluminum top If you're gonna do metal just so you guys know if you guys use steel of any sort I mean anything that was still on it you guys use it on the or put it on the aluminum it'll corrode it just like this stuff here it'll corrode it eventually and it'll wear through the aluminum or eat through the aluminum because aluminum and still have a property that they don't get along so they just eat at each other um then tires i mean you get them for 10 15 bucks depending even five bucks depending on where you guys get them from what size you need these are one and a half 1.9s so it depends on the size of tires you guys need. Um, like I said, aluminum is definitely good to use it with aluminum. So aluminum rivets, one fourth sizing, or one eighth, my bad, one eighth sizing, one fourth length. So you're gonna need a bit that's a one eighth. See, one eighth to fit it in. And there it is. There's the rivet. If you guys never seen one, it's aluminum. Very easy to rivet. Aluminum washer or, or backup washer or backing washer, whatever you guys want to call them, to fit it. And what that does is actually help keep the rivet from tearing through or help keep it tighter or strong against the piece of the metal. I like to use them on a lot of stuff, so <laughs> definitely nice. But like I said, make sure you use aluminum with aluminum. Because if you don't, it'll corrode the trailer or the metal or the aluminum so sorry about my hand getting in the way 
So to cut this stuff, all I used was a pair of tin snips, but you guys can use a metal Dremel bit or a metal hacksaw blade. I personally like this way, it's way faster, and you clean it up with a uh, sanding disc for your Dremel. This is one of those $20 hyper tough tools. Loving it. Don't have to spend a lot of money on these things. I mean, this thing has lasted me for a long time. These things are cheap. These things I got for free from a buddy. Um, these here I had to buy because I didn't have any. My old pair broke. They were getting old and I kept putting using stainless rivets. And stainless are very hard to put in. But this was, I think, 15 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. Tractor supply. Um, yeah, the rivets were seven bucks for a hundred, two fifty for the thirty count rivets. Um, the rivet tool, like I said, was fifteen bucks. But you can get them from ten to thirty bucks. Um, thread lock, if you don't already got it, five to six bucks. I mean, depending on where you get it from, the size of the bottle. So, it was pretty simple to do. All you guys pretty much got to do is just figure out the length of your width of your trailer or vehicle. So you measure from tire to tire, make it a little bit wider, and that'd be your front piece and your back piece. And you guys measure the length of the vehicle that you guys want to put on there. So from here to here, and you add a little bit more. And the reason why you want to always add a little bit more, because you don't want to trailer that barely fits your vehicle on there. Then you get the vehicle that you are building it for or you can build them for both so it accommodates both vehicles and you want to put it on there after you guys build the chassis and I'll show you more of that but the most important part about building a trailer even in real life for a real vehicle is you want to make sure you have tongue weight even with the vehicle or the weight on there so it has tongue weight just trying to fall back down you want to make sure that's like that loaded and unloaded because what you're going to get is if it's like that unloaded it'll be fine but as soon as you load it and it tries to pick up you want to push your axle farther backwards or back towards the back of the trailer and there is this truth such thing as too much tongue weight neither too because if you have too much it's going to squat your truck all the way down a bump stop or spring or shock on this dense nets. So, you don't want to ride around with stiff, stiff springs or coils or anything like that trying to prevent your vehicle from bottoming out because you guys didn't take the time to adjust your axle length or width or work placement. So, it sits like that loaded. And it should sit like that, even unloaded. If not, just sit there and move the axle back a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. You don't have to drill a hole every time. Just place it there like that. And just keep moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it until you find the place that it is happy at. And then mark it. Make sure it's even because if you guys don't, if it's sitting at an angle, the trailer will try to dog walk or caddy walk, try to walk itself out like while you're driving. And it'll just look funny and it'll pull really weird. So that's the trailer build. All riveted together. Like I said, it's very simple to do. Very simple tools. Instead of spending two hundred some dollars on a trailer, you guys can just make one for fifty bucks. No, no bearings. I know a lot of people put bearings in theirs, but I'm not gonna draw, haul this thing from here to Camp Hayes, Florida. I mean, come on now. I'm not gonna haul this thing for millions of miles. It's for my RC vehicle, which I drive maybe a mile a year. <laughs> So, it's not going to wear out. And if it does, you guys can always rebuild that part and put a couple of roller bearings or whatever you guys want to do in there. You guys can do that even now. But I literally built this trailer quick, easy, simple, so everybody can do it. I mean, everything is just simple on it. You cannot get no more basic than this. If you guys didn't know anything, how to do cuts, Anything like that, just let me know. But all I used, like I said, was 10 snips, rivet, backup washers as needed, rivet gun, a Dremel, pair of needle nose of some sort, 
some old blank tires that were just laying around. A piece of ready rod or all thread, whatever you guys want to call it. A piece of aluminum angle, which you guys don't have to use aluminum. You guys can use steel or any other type of metal. And a piece of sheet aluminum, which you guys can use plastic, aluminum grate, metal grate. Um, pretty much anything you guys want to use or nothing. You guys can just run like a little piece all the way down there and just leave the trailer open in the middle. So whatever you guys want to do on that, the t even the receiver hitch I built, I just used some uh, leftover pieces of plastic and just put some super glue on there. And this trailer is 100% recycled besides the aluminum. <laughs> so um, if you guys need any help, just I guess leave a message down in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you guys have any questions leave a comment and I'll get back to you as fast as I can um, just like share and subscribe if you guys like the video definitely be more content coming later I got one more trailer I got to build for something else that I'll show you guys here in a couple more days